Hello there, Ross developers, and welcome to this live class number 93. Uh, we are going to be talking about basic kinematics of mobile robots, specifically of the differential drive robot. So yeah, if you are ready, let's go, let's start. So hello there Ross developers and welcome to this live class number 93. As I've said, we are going to be talking about kinematics of mobile robots and specifically we are going to focus on the kinematic model of the differential drive type of robot for this class. Yeah, but before starting, let me know please if everything is fine, if sound is fine, you can see me fine. I had some problems here uh, in order to start the, this, this live class, this stream. But now, uh, apparently, everything is working fine, at least in my setup here, I see everything correct. But let me know, please, in the comments so that I can verify that everything is fine and I can, I can continue with this live class without any issue. So let me quickly go to the chat. I can see here some uh, people, um, Adam, Joker, Biorel, Dinesh, Anton, Gloria, Kay, Okay, all it's fine now, everything is right. Guess I saw something on Move It On Ross 2. Yeah, great, fine, all good, all fine, all fine. Go ahead. Okay, great. Yeah, so um, as Dinesh says, in theory, we were going to do today a live class about Move It 2. However, we've been, uh, well, trying to prepare this live class and everything. And uh, unfortunately, Move It 2 is still in a too early stage. So many things has to be developed yet. So the live class mm, wasn't very complete. So we have uh, finally uh, decided to wait until Movie 2 is a little bit more developed and we can create a, a better live class and provide more material and more useful material. Yeah, Because right now it's at a super, super early stage and many, many things are going to change in the following weeks, months related to Movie 2. So we prefer to, to wait a little bit until, until this is a little bit more developed in order to make this live class. So that's why we have advanced next week's live class to today. And we are going to be talking about kinematics of uh, the differential drive robot. Yeah. All right. So everything is fine and smoothly running. Hello. Today, today's topic is my master degree topic. Oh, that's great, Joker. I like this channel. Ross Q&A answer is very cool. Thank you very much. Min, minted, minted Han. Fine, Alberto. Thank you for clarification. Okay, great. So let's go for it then. So very quickly, I'm going to take here a quick drink on my ROS Mac, which by the way, as you can see, it's a, a ROS2 Mac. I will need to switch it back to the to my ROS developers Mac as usual, but today I still have this one. So let's go. I'm going to switch right now to my computer screen and we are going to start. There we go. All right. So um, let me quickly refresh this here. And I should have here my live class for today so that I can share it with you in the chat as always. Let's see. Okay, not yet. So let me grab it real quick. Mm -mm. Let me open here. All right. So let me super quick grab here the link for the live class so that I can share it with you guys. Let 
let's see. All right, everything ready. Okay, so super quickly, let me come here to the YouTube channel and paste here the link. There we go, excellent. So, as always, the first thing we are going to do is to come here to the project, verify that you have this project. So with the link I have shared to you, you can paste it here directly to your browser and uh, you are going to get this uh, project related to life class number 93 of kinematic model of a differential drive robot. Uh, if you don't have an account just created in, in, in just some seconds, you are going to be able to have your account ready. It's completely free, so go ahead. Then once you are logged in and you have the project, we are going to open it. So I'm going to click here on the open project and I'm going to start loading my project and loading all the environment for my project. Then meanwhile, let me, uh, as always, uh, talk. Uh, in this case, I want to talk to you and remember you about our ROS developers uh, conference. Let me come here to the web page. And by the way, I'm going to share as well this web page with you here in the chat. There we go. So uh, as you can see, this is the third edition uh, of our ROS developers conference. Uh, in this case, we have named it ROS developers day because we are going to have all the conferences and all the speakers in one single day. So it's going to be a super day for ROS developers. And it's going to be on June 27th as you can see here. So uh, three weeks, in, in three weeks, it's going to be uh, this Rose Developers Day. So it's getting closer and closer each day. And uh, as you can see here in the webpage, we are starting here to reveal speakers. Still, some of them uh, need to be revealed, but uh, it's going to be a super, super interesting uh, day with different conferences. Uh, done by different ROS experts in uh, many different topics. And as always, as we always like to do, it's not going to be a listen-only conference, but it's going to be a practice conference. So meanwhile, these speakers are uh, developing their, their, their topics, you're going to be able to practice with a ROS yet, as we are going to do right now in, uh, in this live class. So it's going to be um, a day where you're going to be able to learn and practice a lot of ROS and about many different and interesting ROS topics. Yeah, so if you are interested in, in this, I highly recommend you to uh, register for this ROS Developers Day. Yep, and finally, I, I, I want to thank to our uh, premium sponsors, which are Aproxima and Robotnik for supporting us. Yep, so, all right, so let's go for it. Here I have my project, it's, it's been already loaded. Excellent. So I want all of you guys to be in the same point as I am right now. So having the project loaded with the notebook opened. Verify that the notebook is the correct one. So it is the one for life class number 93. And then you are going to be uh, ready and set up for starting. So let me know guys in the chat if uh, everybody is uh, ready, if everybody has the project loaded without problems. Ready, says Alejandro Beltran. Keihan also says loading. Still loading, okay. It can take up to one minute maybe to load. So don't worry, just wait uh, uh, a few seconds. Ready to go, no problem, loading, loaded, loaded. Okay, excellent, excellent. So as I can see, everybody is ready uh, for a start. So let's go for it. Then, uh, first of all, uh, a couple of requirements for being able to follow this live class, minimum requirements, is to have a basic knowledge of Linux and a basic knowledge of uh, Python, yeah? As always, uh, I want to remember you that you can get this knowledge by following our free courses in our Robotic Night Academy. Here, here you have the Linux for Robotics, but we also have the 
Python for Robotics, these two, which are completely free. So you can check them and have a look at them in case you want to improve your skills of Python or, or, or Linux, which are going to be useful not only for this life class, but for uh, almost everything if you are a developer. So go for it. And uh, next thing is to set up the environment. So for this life class, we are going to be using this uh, super simple two-wheeled robot. And in order to start it, all you have to do is to come here to the simulations button, click on the choose launch file button here, and then here you're going to be able to select a launch file from uh, many different packages. In this case, we are going to select the main.launch file from the exam description package, yeah? So I'm going to select this main.launch and click on the launch button, yes? This, uh, uh, this information, so the package and the name of the launch file you have to select, you have it here as well in the project, in case you don't remember or you want to, to refresh it, you have it here in the notebook as well, yeah? Then, after a few seconds, as you can see, this automatically starts loading here my gazebo simulation. Here I have it, let me make it a little bit bigger. And you are going to have a simulation like this one with this uh, super simple two-wheeled robot, yes? So this is the setup you need to have with the notebook here at one side and the gazebo simulation here at the other side, uh, already loaded and ready to start working. Yes, then, uh, so yeah, also before starting uh, here with the, with the theory and explaining things and everything, let me know guys if uh, you had any problem loading the simulation or, or, or if you have been able to successfully load the Gazebo simulation and you can see properly here the robot. So let me know guys in the chat as well. Okay, all going good, says uh, Kai and Sandy. So, okay, so apparently everything is going uh, fine. No problems with the simulation, everybody's set up, yep. All right, so let's, let's, let's start then. So, first of all, uh, as I've already said at the beginning, we are going to be uh, talking in this live class of the kinematics of a differential drive robot. Yes, uh, specifically we are going to be analyzing the kinematic model. Yes, but before going for it, let's uh, make some explanations that you need to understand. So first of all, everybody knows what a differential drive robot is. Is this clear? Yes. So basically a differential drive robot is a robot that can, uh, it's a, it's a non-holonomic robot, yes? So it, it can't move in any direction. That's one first thing. So it's a non-holonomic type of robot. And uh, the main characteristic of a dif differential drive robot is that it can move linearly in the x-axis. So it can move in a straight line forward and backward, yes? So it can move forward and backward. Let me show you like this. It can move forward and backward in the x-axis and it can also rotate in its z-axis like this, yes? So with these two types of movements of velocities, linear velocity and angular velocity, by combining them, you are we are going to be able to drive this robot around the environment, making it turn, etc. yes? But basically the main characteristic of a differential drive robot is this. It has these two type of velocities, the angular velocity, which is this one. It can rotate on its Z axis and the linear velocity, which is this one. And it allows it to move forward and backward. Yes. So this is the main characteristic of a differential drive robot. Yeah. Is this clear? Okay. I can see here everybody is saying that simulation loaded. Everything is clear. All right. Excellent. Then, this is the first thing. So this is uh, the, main the main characteristic you need to know about a differential drive type of robot. Now, I've said that we are going to be discussing about the kinematics and more specifically the kinematic model of a differential drive robot. So first of all, what is kinematics? Everybody knows what uh, we know as kinematics. 
So basically, we refer as kinematics as uh, the study, the mathematical study of the motion of an object, in this case of a robot, without con considering its causes. So basically, basically, we are going to analyze the motion, the movement of, the, of this robot, but we are not going to take into account, we are not going to analyze what is causing this motion, yeah? For instance, a force, whatever, yes? So it's basically the study of the motion, yes? Without considering its causes. Um, okay, so this is kinematics. We know what is kinematics now, but what is a model then? Because we are going to be analyzing the kinematic model, yes? Then what is a model? And um, a model, basically, it's a, it's a simplified and mathematical representation of a real physical system, yes? So this, in our case, this simulation, this environment, is our real system, yes? With this robot, this environment, this is our physical system. In this case, it's simulated, yes? But this would be our physical system, this robot, yes? Then, a model, basically, it's... Uh, a simplified and, mathemat and mathematical way of representing this system, this robot in this case, yes? So, first of all, uh, a model is a simplification, yes? I've said that it's a simplified mathematical representation, and why it's simplified? Well, it's simplified because it's impossible to take into consideration uh, all the properties of the of the system, yes? There are many things here that we cannot take into account, yes? A real physical system is uh, very complex, so uh, we need to make some simplifications, yes? We need to simplify it, because it's impossible to take into account um, all the variables that would uh, affect a real physical system, yes? That's what, what, why we say that uh, a model is a simplification. Yes, uh, and then why? Uh, and then it's also mathematical because a model is represented by an equation or a set of equations. Yes, so at the end we are going to have basically a, a set of equations that are going to be a, a simplified representation of my physical system, of my robot in this case. Yes, does this make sense more or less? So, summarizing, um, a, kinema yeah, a kinematic model is going to be a set of equations that will describe the behavior, the behavior in terms of motion, because it's a kinematic model. So, it's going to be a set of equations that describe the behavior in terms of motion of the robot. Yes, this is the end line, the summary of all this. Yes, so this is a kinematic model. Yes, does this make sense? Let me see the chat. Um, I can see there Daniel asking, will this class be saved on my account? Yeah, for sure. Once you once you you get this project, it's going to be forever uh, saved there in your workspace, so you can access it uh, anytime you want, Daniel. James says, that makes sense. Okay, fine. Okay, great. So let's keep going then. What do you say? Let's keep going. All right, then. First of all, so we are going to be talking about the kinematic model of a differential drive robot. But before that, I want to introduce a, a even a more simple type of robot, which is the unicycle robot. A unicycle robot is basically a, a, a wheel which spins, yes? It's, uh, it's the, the, the simplest mobile robot, let's say, in this case, yes? So it would be uh, this, yeah? It would be like a wheel that spins on its axis, yeah? Then uh, I want to talk a little bit about this unicycle robot and specifically I want to analyze the kinematic model of this unicycle uh, robot because it's going to help me later in order to generate the kinematic model for the differential drive robot, yes? You are going to understand this uh, later. So, let me get here a quick uh, drink. All right, 
Then, first of all, what we are going to do is to generate here a, a, a representation of my robot. In this case, we are discussing the unicycle robot. Yes? So, this would be the, the graphical, the visual representation of, of this robot, of this system, let's say. Yes? So, basically, we would define a point, x, y, which has a linear velocity v and an angular velocity w. Yes? And an angle Z, which would be the heading. So basically, all these are things that uh, represent our system. And in order to clarify this and make it uh, easier to understand, let's say that our system is going to have inputs and outputs. Yes? So the outputs of uh, our system is going to be the position and the orientation. Yes, so basically what we are interested in knowing in this case uh, from our robot is the position it is and the heading it is. Yes, so we can say, for instance, that the robot is the position X whatever and E whatever, which is here, somewhere here in this environment. It's here, for instance, and it's heading that direction. Yes, so right now, for instance, the output of our system would be more or less 0, 0, because it's in the 0, 0 position, and it has this heading, yeah, it's looking into the, in this direction, in this case, yes? Then this would be the output of our system, the position of the robot and the orientation, yeah? And then the inputs of our system, so the variables that are going to affect these outputs, so what is going to make uh, change the position and orientation of my robot is going to be two things the linear velocity and the angular velocity yes does this make sense so the linear velocity which defines how fast in this case the wheel is spinning how fast the well the wheel is going and the angular uh, velocity which means how fast uh, the wheel, in this case, it's turning, yes? Remember, before I defined it, the linear velocity would be this movement, this speed, and the angular velocity would be this speed. Yeah? Does it make sense? Then in my system, which in this case, it's the unicycle, I will have a linear velocity and, a, and, a, and an angular velocity, and then depending on these values, on these inputs, my position and orientation is going to change. Yes? So this is basically how we have uh, defined this system, in this case, the unicycle robot. Yes? Does this make sense? Guys? Okay, uh, let me check here the comments. Everything is good. Simulation load. Uh, Makes sense. Perfectly clear. Clear. Thanks for explaining the kinematic model. Uh, you're welcome, Gloria. Is there an email to contact the instructor in person in case we have any questions? Yeah, I can. I can share. I can share my email. Sign up later if you want. Or uh, otherwise, you can. Otherwise, you can leave a comment here in the video, and also we are going to review it. So. After this live class finishes, we are going to publish this as a regular video in our YouTube channel. So you are going to be able to visualize this video many times. And then uh, there you can leave a comment asking uh, some question if you have any doubt. And then we are going to be answering there uh, your questions in the video. Uh, yes, you're teaching very well. Thank you, Edward. Perfectly clear, very intuitive. I love this stuff. Thank you very much. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, I can see that everything is clear now, then, um, all right, but for having a kinematic model, as I've said here at the beginning, we need to have a set of equations that, de that describe this behavior, right? So we need to have some equations. Then in this case, the equations, the kine so the kinematic model for the unicycle is going to be defined by this set of equations here, yes? I'm not going to go and analyze how this is, uh, how we are reach these equations, yeah? Because that would be too deep and that would be 
uh, another topic probably more uh, mathematics related yeah but this would be the set of equations that define the kinematic model of a unicycle robot yes so these equations with these equations we can describe the behavior in terms of motion so we can describe the movement of a unicycle robot yes so it will be x dot equals v v meaning linear velocity uh, cosinus of zeta then y dot is going to be equal to v sinus zeta and uh, zeta dot is going to be w yes then uh, as i've said i'm not going to go into details in how this uh, in how we reach these equations but this can be uh, we we can easily verify that this is true by for instance setting the z the zeta value to zero yes if we set the zeta value to zero to zero we are going to have cos zero equals one so x dot equals v we are going to have this e dot will then equal zero etc yes but by setting zeta to zero we can see that x dot equals v which makes sense because if our z if our zeta so if the orientation of the robot is zero then this means that the robot is going to be moving in the x-axis only having a linear velocity yes so we can easily verify that these uh, equations at least make sense yes by just uh, setting the z to zero all right then we have defined here a set of equations that define the behavior of a unicycle however this class we are going to be analyzing and testing the kinematic model of the differential drive robot so let's go for it yes for now let's leave this here um, at a site and uh, we are going to go back in a moment yes so i have seen that uh, the unicycle model is clear by your comments so let's let's keep going then let's now try to analyze the kinematic model of the differential drive robot yes so as before here we defined the visual representation here of our system which uh, was very simple and here we are going to do the same for the differential drive robot yes then in this case we are going to have as well an x an x and y point that in this case we can define it for instance at the center of the chassis of the chassis yes this, this would be our uh, reference frame for the position for the x y position then we are going to have as well a heading yes and then we are going we are going to have a left wheel which will have a velocity and the right wheel which will have a velocity as well so we are going to have a velocity for the right wheel and a velocity for the left wheel yes because each wheel can spin at a different velocity they don't have to be the same yes that's why we have a velocity for the right wheel and a velocity for the left wheel yes then in this case we are going to need a couple of extra parameters which are l which is the distance between the wheels yes so this distance here from the left wheel to the right wheel we are going to call it l and then we have also the air parameter which is going to be the radius of our wheel yes then these two parameters can be uh, easily obtained in any robot so you you can get them from the specifications uh, or, or even you can just get a, a, a meter a rule and measure it yourself yes so this is no secret uh, you can uh, access this you can get the values for these parameters uh, very easily yes then um, again in order to generate a model what we are going to do is to uh, define our system in uh, inputs and outputs yes so the outputs for our system let me know what do you think are going to be the outputs for this system for the differential drive robot remember that we defined it here previously the outputs of our system for the unicycle robot as the position and orientation 
So for the differential drive robot, what do you think are going to be the outputs of this system? Let me know in the chat. Engineering Nation says velocity and heading. Mm, that's close. That's close. You have one right and one wrong. Engineering. Okay, Jan Spice says X, Y and heading. Or position and velocity. Mm, almost. Okay, so VL and VR says Javier Moreno. Position and, orient and orientation, wheel velocity. Okay, so some of you have it right, some of you have, have it wrong. So the correct answer is position and orientation, yes? So, again, in a differential drive robot, which is this robot, or for instance, a Turtlebot 2 robot, yes, which probably all of you know what a, a, the Turtlebot 2 robot is, that is also a, a differential drive robot, yeah? So, in this case, for this differential drive robot, what is going to define the state of this robot, it's again the position and orientation, yes? So we are going to have the position defined by x, y, and the heading defining, defined by an angle uh, z, yes? So the outputs of the system are going to be exactly the same for the unicycle and for the differential drive robot, yes? So the, the parameters that are going to define the state of my robot are going to be the position and the orientation. Yes, the position in x, y, and the orientation. Now, what are going to be the inputs to this system? So for the unicycle, the inputs were the linear velocity, v, and the angular velocity, uh, w, for the unicycle. But now, for the differential drive robot, the inputs change. We do not have a linear velocity and an angular velocity, but we are going to have a VR and BL. So we are going to have the velocity of the right wheel or the velocity of the left wheel. Yes? These are going to be the inputs to my system. Depending on these velocities, depending on the velocities of each of, of the right wheel and the left wheel, my position and orientation of the robot are going to change. Yes? Does this make sense? Yeah, so the inputs for my system are going to be VR and VL, and the outputs are going to be the position and the heading and the orientation of the robot. Yes, then having defined the inputs and outputs of my system, I can again, in order to generate a kinematic model of my robot, I can have this set of equations. Yes, so x dot equals radius of the wheels uh, divided by two, multiply it by VR plus VL, multiply it by cos uh, Z, yes? Then this set of equations here are the kinematic model of a differential drive robot, yes? Again, I'm not going to go into how we get these uh, equations, etc. but uh, these equations can uh, basically define the relation between the inputs and outputs of my system, yes? Then this set of equations are the kinematic model of a differential drive robot. Now, now, these equations are not uh, too much intuitive, yes? Because for instance, for instance, uh, if I ask any of you in the chat um, now, right now, if I ask you in the chat, hey, uh, how can my robot reach this position? How can it? How can my robot reach this position here? This dot. This, for instance, let me spawn here a, a cube. There we go. So, how can I make my robot reach this cube? If I ask you this, you probably, I, I think, I believe that you are not going to tell me, hey, you have to apply uh, uh, two meters per second speed to the right wheel and uh, uh, 0 0.5 meters per second 
speed to the left wheel. I don't think you are going to tell me this, right? Probably what you are going to tell me is, hey, just drive the robot forward, um, I don't know, uh, 10 meters and then turn to the right. Yes? Probably this is going to be your answer because it's much more intuitive. So it's not, uh, for us humans, it's not intuitive to think in terms of speeds, of rates of wheels. Yes? So when we see a robot moving or when we think uh, 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 about a robot moving or a car moving, we don't think of uh, what is the speed that each wheel is having. We think, we just think, hey, the robot is moving forward at, at this velocity or the robot is turning at this velocity. Yes, this for us makes much more sense, right? So what we are going to do is one thing. We are going to combine the kinematic model of the differential drive robot, which is this one, with the kinematic model of the unicycle, which is this one, yes? And why can we do this? Or how are we doing this? Well, we can do this because the outputs of both systems are the same. So for this system, you can see that x dot, y dot, and z dot are the same as this x dot, y dot, and z dot, yes? Then because of this, what we can do is to combine both systems of equations, yes? Then by combining uh, these systems of equations, by using mathematical rules, we can then reach these equations, which make much more sense because, because now we are talking in terms of linear speed, so how fast the robot is moving, and uh, angular speed, which means how fast the robot is turning. Yeah? Does this make sense, guys? So, by combining this system of equations with the unicycle model system of equations, we can reach these equations where we can iso isolate the linear velocity and the angular velocity. Yes? Then with these equations as well, we can then isolate VR and VL. So we can isolate the speed, the velocity of the right wheel and the velocity of the left wheel. Yes? So now for our unicycle model, we have a way of calculating the velocities for each wheel and also the linear and angular velocity of the robot. Yeah? Does this make sense, guys? At this point is where all the theory and mathematical equations and everything finishes. So now we are going to start practicing. So let me know, guys, if this is clear, if it makes sense, if you have understood uh, these, uh, all these equations I have presented here for the kinematic model of the differential drive robot. Yes, does it make sense, guys? Let me know. Makes sense. Yes, this makes sense now. Are the Vs angular velocities of the wheels? No. The Vs, uh, Tawanda, very good question. The Vs are, are just um, the, the, the speed So, oh, well, it's the rate at which the spill it's, uh, it's uh, spinning. Uh, the rate at which the wheel is spinning. Sorry. <laughs> Many <laughs> complex words there for my English level. So, the, these velocities are the rate at which the wheel is spinning. Yes? All clear, thank you very much. Uh, I guess, okay, 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 many new messages here. <laughs> let me let me go a bit up. Okay, more or less here. Via twist message, asks Dinesh. Yeah, well, via twist message, we are going to see right now that we can control the linear uh, velocity and angular velocity. Inverse kinematics.
inverse kinematic. I don't know what you are asking in engineering. Angular speed should be uh, WR VR minus LV. R V R minus V L divided L not R Anna Anna Mathen is saying something here related to the equations here. Exactly what you what do you mean, Anna? But how are the the left and right velocities controlled? Uh, we are going to see it right now. Uh, uh, Abed, you you are going to see how these velocities are controlled. Well, in a real system, they are controlled with motors. Yeah. So in a in a differential drive robot, each each wheel has its own motor. And this motor controls the the speed of, of of each wheel. Now in the simulation, we are going to see right now how to how to control them. Uh, Rashik's clear, crystal clear, very clear. Tangential speeds, I think. Thanks, firstly. But is this kinematic model available for the four or six? But is this kinematic model available for the four or six wheeled mobile robots? Well, as long as it is a, as it works as a differential uh, drive robot, the kinematic model. Well, then you would use the canonical kinematic model for non-holonomical robots. Yes, o Omer Kaya, which it's not described in this class, in this life class. But maybe we can create another more complex model. So is that RPM? Yeah, that's right. Tawanda, it's RPM. Tawanda, yes. Rate at which the wheels are spinning. Yes, it's uh, revolutions per. Yeah, it's RPM. Okay, so let's keep going, guys, because uh, uh, we still have some practice to do here. All right, then. In Ross, as you already know, and also I saw some messages there in the chat which we're talking about this, um, the message that we use in order to send velocities to robots are twist messages, yes, in general terms. So in ROS, we control the velocity of the robot using a twist message. And a twist message, it's defined like this. Yes, we can also here check it on a, on a shell real quick. Let me open it here. So if I do a ROS message show twist, I'm going to see the definition of a twist message, yes? Basically, it contains two vectors, one for the linear velocity and another one for the angular velocity, yes? Then um, for a differential drive robot, as I've already said before, we can only move linearly in the x-axis and we can apply an angular velocity in the z-axis, so we can rotate the robot like this. This for a differential drive robot. Then what does this mean? This means that the only values we are going to be interested from this message are the linear x velocity, this one, and the angular z velocity, yes? Because for instance, the linear y velocity would uh, be this movement, which a differential, uh, a differential drive robot cannot move like this, yes? Then that's why from this message, we only consider for differential drive robots, the linear X component and the angular Z component. Yes, does this make sense? Then uh, basically this means that the linear X velocity, this value, it's the same as this V here. At the, at the, uh, it's the same as this linear velocity V Oops, sorry. And the angular Z component of this message, it's the same as this angular velocity W. Yes? Does this make sense? So 
With a twist message, basically what we control is the linear velocity v and the angular velocity w of our robot. Yeah, this is what a twist message, uh, uh, this twist message does for a differential drive type of robot. Yeah. Then now we know that if we have these values, the v and the w, we can then calculate or get the values for v super and v sub l. Yes, because for calculating these uh, the speeds of uh, each wheel, we only need the linear velocity value, the w value, and the values l and r, which, as we explained before, are the distance between the wheels and the uh, and the radius of the wheel. So we can easily know these parameters. So what does this mean? This means that we have a way of converting twist messages into wheel speeds, into V super and V sub L. Yes? Does this make sense? All right, then as for uh, the distance between wheels or L parameter and the radius of the wheels or R parameter, uh, in a real robot, uh, as I've said, we could get it from the specifications, measure, measuring these distances uh, ourselves. However, in ROS, we can also get these values from the URDF file, the URDF file, yes? Everybody knows what a URDF file. So a URDF file, it's uh, the file that uh, defines my robot, that describes my robot. In this case, we can access this URDF file and have a look at it from the IDE. So let me open here the IDE. And then here I have the path for this file. So if I come here to the simulation workspace, SRC folder, and then I open here the two wheeled folder. And from here I open the exam underscore description package. Here I will see a folder which is named URDF. Then inside this URDF, let me make this bigger. So that, yes, so simulation workspace, SRC, to wheelet, exam description, and then URDF folder. Then inside this URDF folder, I have a file which is called exam.chakra. Let me open this file here so that I can visualize it properly. In fact, let me modify this to an XML format so that I can see it better. There we go. So that I can see the, uh, the highlights in different colors, etc. So basically, in this file, in the this URDF file, what I have is the definition of my robot, the description of my robot of all the links, joints, etc. that uh, my robot has. Then here, having a quick look, for instance, at the top here of the at the top here of the file, I can see the definition of the chassis. Yes. So here I have my chassis defined. Yes, the chassis in this case for my robot is this uh, this red box I have here. Yes, as you can see, this is defined as a box. Yes, box of this size. Yes, then from this definition, from this box, here we have the the well here we have the distances that define this box. Yes. Here, in the link, in the chassis definition, here inside, for instance, in the collision, we have the measures of my chassis, yes? So basically, in this case, it's 0 0.5 meters, which would be this distance. We have 0 0.3 meters, which would be this distance, which happens to be the distance between the wheels, yes? So this distance is the distance between the wheels. Then we already have here from reading the URDF file, we already know our L parameter, which in this case it's 0 0.3 meters. And then finally you have the 0 0.07 meters, which would be in this case the, the height. It would be this distance, the height of the chassis. Yes? But now here from the URDF file, we have extracted the L parameter, yes, the L parameter, which is the distance between wheels, which in my case, it's 0 0.3 meters. 
And I can do the same for the wheels. So for the radius of the wheels. So here I can search on the URDF file for the where my wheels are defined. And here, for instance, I have the wheel, the right wheel. Here, if I come to the collisions, for instance, of the right wheel, I can see that this is defined as a cylinder which has a radius of 0 0.1 meters. So again, from here, I can get my error parameter, which is the radius of my uh, wheel. In this case, the right wheel, but the right wheel and left wheel, as you can see, are the same. Yes, yeah, so the left wheel, it, it also has a, radi a radius of 0 0.1 meters. Yes? So from the URDF file, we can extract the uh, R parameter and the L parameter. Yeah? Make sense? Then, now, so we know the R and L parameters and we know the relation between a twist message and the velocities of each wheel, the velocities for the right wheel and the left wheel, which are defined by this set of equations. Yes? So what are we going to do now? What we are going to do is to convert a twist message into specific velocities for the wheels. Yes? How are we going to do that? All right. So for this, our robot has two topics, the left wheel, left wheel controller slash command and right wheel controller slash command. So let me open here a new shell and very quickly do a ROS topic list. And here I can see the left wheel controller topic and the right wheel controller topic. Then to these topics, I can send command. If I publish, for instance, here to the right wheel controller, which is the right wheel, this one, if I publish a message here, I'm going to start spinning the right wheel. So let me send, for instance, this command here. As you can see, my right wheel is starting to spin at a rate of 0 0.1. And because of this, my robot is start to turning to the right because only my right wheel is spinning, yes? So now, for instance, if I start spinning the left wheel, let me publish here to the left, to the left wheel controller topic, I'm going to start spinning the left wheel. So now I'm spinning both wheels at the same rate. I'm spinning the right wheel and the left wheel at the same rate. So what happens is that the robot moves forward because both wheels are rotate, are are spinning at the same rate, yes? So for instance, now, if I stop spinning the right wheel, what is going to happen? Well, it's going to happen that the robot is going to start turning left because only the left wheel will be spinning, yes? So let me do this. And as you can see now, the robot starts rotating or turning to the left because now I'm only rotating the left wheel. Yes? Does it make sense? All right, so let me now stop both. Zero, zero. There we go. All right, so I have stopped both. Let me... Let me just reset here my... my robot real quick to the starting point position. There we go. Here I have it. All right, yeah? So uh, by publishing into these topics, what we are doing basically is to apply these velocities, V super and V sub L, yes? However, okay, uh, let me know guys, does this make sense? Let me see real quick the chat. Um, <clears throat> is there a lecture about self-balancing robot? Not for the moment, Gada, not for the moment. 
How did you do that syntax highlight to XML? That's the one. Okay, super easy. Here in the in the um, here in the IDE, Tawanda, at the bottom right corner, you can see there is here a a, a, a button where you can select. It says select language mode. Yes. So if, if you click here, you can select to highlight your code depending on what what is it. Yeah. Python, Java, CSS, HTML, whatever. Here, if you select XML, this is going to be highlighted as an XM, uh, as an XML file. Yes. So here at the bottom uh, right corner, you can you can change this. Usually the ID detects this uh, automatically, but in some cases it doesn't detect it, and you can you, then you can you can set it manually. That makes sense. Great so far. Thanks so much. Okay. So apparently everything makes sense so far. So let's keep going. Almost, we have already reached. 7 7 p.m. So we have already we are already on the time. Okay, so guys, now what we are going to do is to uh, create a program that applies this kinematic model in order to control our differential drive robot. So for this, first of all, we are going to create a new package. So let me come here to the Calkin workspace SRC and let me execute this command here. All these commands you have them you have them here in the notebook, yeah. So here inside the cutting workspace SRC, I'm going to pass this command, which is going to create a new package. Yes, now I'm going to be able to access this package here in the IDE on the cutting workspace. This new package has appeared. Then here inside the SRC folder, I'm going to create first of all this program, the publish bells.py. So let me create here a new file publish vels.py there we go and then in this program i'm going to copy and paste here this code let me copy and paste this code here there we are and let me create right now as well the second program which is convert vels new file convert underscore vels dot oops there we go convert underscore wells dot by and here I'm going to paste this other program here let me grab it there we go control C and control V there we go all right so now super quick What I'm going to do is to, uh, okay, let me enter here and make sure that my programs have execution permissions. They don't. So I'm going to assign the execution permissions by using a chmod command, chmod plus x. There we go. Now I have them with execution permissions. All right. So now what, uh, what I'm going to do is to first execute my, uh, my convert vels program yes so ros1 well let me source the cutting workspace first of all all right so ros1 convert velocities which is my package convert velocities yeah there we go and then convert vels. So I'm going to first execute this program. Okay, here we have some warnings. Don't worry about them, just ignore them. And now I'm going to execute ros1 convert velocities and publish bells yes so okay let, let me execute it and see what happens here let me execute this program and see what happens here and then later i'm going to explain these these programs okay nothing happens so probably there is Oh yeah, I think I know what happens here. The, the code hasn't saved properly. Okay, guys, so 
real quick, come here to the convert bells, and as you can see here, the joint name, uh, the, the topic name here in the publisher is wrong. Yes, so here what you have to do is to put this topic name, yes? So for the uh, right wheel poop, this is going, the topic is going to be this one, the right wheel controller command. So you can come here, copy it, and paste it here, right wheel command. And for the left wheel, which is this one, it's going to be the same, but left wheel here. Yes? So make sure that you modify this topic name in your programs, guys. Yes, because the topic name, I don't know why it saved uh, with the wrong topic name here. Yes, so make sure to make this modification here. And now, uh, yes, so we are going to execute again the, the convert bells program first and the publish bells program uh, later. And as you can see now, what happens is that the robot starts moving doing a circle movement, yeah? So it's moving in a circle-like movement, yes? Then, let's now analyze why this is happening. So in our program, basically you have two programs. The first one is the Publish Bells program, yes? So this is a super simple ROS publisher, which is publishing into a topic named Twist Bells, and it's publishing the following twist message. The linear X component it's set to 0 0.3 meters per second, and the angular Z component is set to 0 0.3 uh, radians per second, yes? So basically here what we are doing is to publish a twist message, yes? So we can come here, open a new shell, and do a rust topic echo to this topic, to the twist bells, and you are going to see that basically what we have here is a twist message publisher with the uh, linear x component to 0 0.3 and the angular z component to 0 0.3. So basically, we have here a twist message with this value to 0 0.3 and this value to 0 0.3, which is the same as saying that our v is 0 0.3 and our double u it's 0 0.3 as well yes then what are we doing in our second program in the convert rails well in this program what we are doing is to subscribe to this topic to the twist bells and we are reading this twist message yes here we have the callback and you can see that in the callback what we are doing is to save this twist message into this variable, into twist bells, yes? Then, what we are doing? What we are doing is to convert these velocities from the twist message to v super value and v super value. So we are converting the twist message to speeds of the wheels, yes? We are using these equations we are using this equation to calculate V super and V super. Yes? So you can see here that V super we calculated with that equation to multiply it by the, the linear X component, which is V plus angular Z component here, which is W multiply it, no, sorry, yeah, yeah, multiply it by 0 0.3, which is the L value that we got previously from the URDF, and divide it by 2, multiply it by 0 uh, 0.1, which is the R value the radius, yes? Here you have the values of L and R, which we got previously from the URDF file, yes? So basically, and the same for V sub L, yes? So basically here we are using these equations to calculate V sub R and V sub L depending on the values of the angular and linear velocities that we get from the twist message, yes? And then 
once we have the velocities of each wheel, what we do is to publish these velocities into the corresponding topic for the left wheel and for the right wheel. Yes? Then, since we are applying uh, the same linear velocity and angular velocity of 0 to 3, the resulting movement is the robot moving in a circle-like movement. Yes? Do you understand this, what, what we are doing in these programs? Is it clear? Does it make sense for you? These programs, I'm how we have applied the kinematic model of the differential error robot, the equations, in order to be able to calculate the, um, the required VR and V sub L, V sub R and V sub L. Yes? Does it make sense, guys? Let me, let me have a look at the chat. You made an error. Topic name is written is written wrong. Yeah, you are right, Hussein. You need to change the topic in the Python file. Okay, so I see that you already saw the error. Excellent. Excellent, guys, that you by yourself already saw the error. Yeah, so the, the topic names were, were wrong, so we had to change change them. Sorry for that. I wonder if I can publish Odom without the velocity messages, only the position. Well, uh, you can. You, you, you can create a, a, an odometry message which only contains the, well, the, the, the position and orientation, I guess, okay. And you can leave the, the, the velocities if you, if you are not interested in, in them. 100%, yes, this makes sense so far, perfect and clear. Okay, excellent. Excellent. So I'm I'm happy that all of you have uh, understood here uh, the kinematic model of the differential error robot and how here in this small exercise we have used the equations of the kinematic model of the differential drive robot in order to calculate the speeds of each wheel in order to generate a certain movement. In this case, the movement is a circle like movement. Yeah. Excellent, guys. So, thank you very much for the lesson. Thank you. You are welcome, guys. All right, so we are already uh, 10 minutes past uh, our ending time of the live class. So I'm going to end it uh, right here, guys. Let me switch back to my camera. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, for attending this live, this live, ca this live class. Sorry. I hope you enjoyed it, but uh, most of all, I, uh, I hope that you have learned something new. I hope that you, um, you got something new. You can, uh, you can learn something from this hour that you have been here working uh, with me and listening to me. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, I will see you next week, next Tuesday in the next live class where we are going to have another amazing topic, also Ross related. And I will see you there. Then until then, please, as always, stay safe. We are uh, in in a difficult period. Yeah, so we are in uh, going through some uh, hard times. So try to stay safe, stay home. Don't go out if it's not required. Uh, and yeah, I will see you next week with uh, another live class and with more Ross content for you. So bye bye and thank you very much.